these little fellas, they come in enormous numbers. Apparently about midnight they're at their most abundant. And the way it works is there are these very, very bright lights which attract the grasshoppers and they slide down corrugated iron sheets into empty oil drums. It had their legs and wings yeah. plucked off, it seems. But they're still alive, which is slightly disturbing. Could we please order one bag? One, one foot. Is that Wazungu price? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's normal price. That's normal price. It's good, is it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Superb. So delicious. So let's try. What do you see down here? It looks like a pile of grass, but actually these are the wings of the grasshoppers. People who have come here and they tested the insects, they, I think they are tasty. <laughs> yes, mm. they just joined the bandwagon yes. of eating insects. Eating insects is as old as the, the people themselves. People here have been eating, eating insects and it's not all here but all over Africa people eat insects. And traditionally here the grasshoppers were collected from the wild and prepared for the husbands. The men were a little bit greedy, they do not want the women to take the insects. My name is Damari Maito, a resident of Nyendo, Masaka, Uganda. I'm breeding crickets as a business. It has brought impact on our families because the crickets have high protein content. It has improved the health of our children. Again, we sell them and get money. It's not very tiresome. You don't put in a lot of money but you get a lot of money from it. With the grasshoppers, they only appear twice in a year, that is in the rainy seasons. We cannot have them throughout the year. So that's why we looked at breeding crickets, so we can have them sustainable throughout the year. Uh, the population in the country is growing at a very fast rate. And at the end of the day, not every family is able to afford enough food for themselves. And Crickets coming in has an alternative protein. We are able to solve the problem. Now, after five to eight days, we put them in a dryer. One day it is dried, you crush it, sieve it, and then it's ready to be consumed. So one day later, we have returned to Damali's home, and she has prepared for us some lovely dried crickets, which we're now going to pound into powder, OK? <laughs> and this is a traditional African device, right? Water and pestle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When it has come totally to powder, you stop. Oh, you can't eat up your granny off a bus. Oh, you can't. Oh, you can't eat up your granny. Cause she's your daddy's mommy. You can't eat up your granny off a bus. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you can't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, Thank you very much. Yeah, we will enjoy go. eating this. The sound of crickets. We are here to meet Patricia, another cricket farmer, who has agreed to prepare some cricket cuisine for us. I want to show you how uh, we intend to, to eat these crickets. You can fry them using hot oil, deep frying. And you can put in any flavor, onions, you can use green pepper, okay. any flavor you want. Have you been doing this for a long time or is it something new? Uh, it is something new. This is how they look like when they are ready. I'm very interested to try these. Yeah. Well, they certainly look very appetizing. I'm going to take a few. Thank you. Well, it's very, very Can I have one? <laughs> you will want more than one. Mm. It's so delicious. Mm. Mm. Oh, yes. It's got a rare smack to it. <laughs> they are packed full of protein, good fats, minerals, vitamins, and fiber. Here in Africa, over 500 species of edible insects have been recorded. Yet there may be problems associated with their large-scale harvesting from the wild. It may not be entirely sustainable. Moreover, many of those species are only seasonally abundant. That's why insect farming is so attractive. It's a resource-efficient, cost-effective, sustainable way to feed the masses year-round. Look no further than crickets. They require one-twelfth the feed of cattle, 
far less water and land, and they do not transmit zoonotic diseases. There is no such thing as mad cricket disease. So there you have it, the food of the future, a widely available, dirt cheap, ecologically friendly superfood. If you care about your health and that of the planet, it's high time you got over the yuck factor and embraced entomophagy.